tonight about seven. <laughs> Second shift will be in. Well, they. <laughs> All right, come bring some food. <laughs> bring some food, chicken nuggets. Yeah, they have chicken strips in there. Very cold. What's the temperature inside there? 49. Hey, I got some water dripped on me, bro. Oh, Everybody walk. <laughs> Guess we got a walk. All right, who wants to help me push? I'm joking, I'm joking. How's everyone doing today? Good. Well, that's good. I'd like to welcome everyone to Pioneer Tunnel and to Ashland, Pennsylvania. Right now, you are in an actual coal mine that was run and operated by the Philadelphia Reading Coal and Iron Company. The section that we will be touring operated from the years 1911 to 1931. When this mine was in production, the company employed 35 men, 10 mules, and a handful of young boys. And with a workforce such as that, they were responsible for getting out of here 400 tons of coal out of here each day. But in 1931, the mine was forced to close down due to the Great Depression, but reopening it in 1962 as a tourist attraction. The exact area that we stopped at is the Mammoth Vein, and you can see it right here. And I know you can't see it in the first car right now, but you will see it when we drive past. But this is the largest vein of anthracite coal in the world. And in this section of the mine, the width begins right here, right by this rock formation, which is known as the bottom rock. All that shiny stuff right there that I'm shining my light at, that is all anthracite coal. And it stretches all the way down there to a little bit past the mine motor to about where my light ends. And it does travel east to west for 40 miles in each direction from this location. So it does run a total of 80 miles altogether. And within those 80 miles, it can get up to around 200 feet thick, which is rare for an anthracite coal vein. With all that being said, right now you are in the heart of the anthracite coal region. There is no other place in the United States that has as much anthracite coal in one area as where you are sitting right now. 
what I am going to do, I'm going to move the carts up further. We're going to stop. We're going to get out. And I'm going to show everyone how they mined coal out of here. We're also going to talk a little bit about history and geology. Does anyone have any questions up to this point? All right, I'll move the carts forward. Mold. Touch it. She's touching it. What is it? Well, I think it might be something they put on there. Why are you guys touching it? <laughs> Stop killing her, it rubs it on me. <laughs> it's okay. says we can go. How far underground are we? 400 feet underground. Is that far? Pretty far. What? Yeah, they have a slice. Is that guy? You see, you see him there? Where? Right there. He's just standing there, looking at the wall. There's not a guy. I know. That's Johnny. Is Johnny? All right. If you cannot see this now, you'll see this when you walk past here. But if you take a look right here, you can see that we do have another vein of coal. Now it's nowhere near the size of the mammoth vein. But this is a good example of how anthracite is found in this region. And it is found in these veins like this. And the reason why they categorize them in the veins is because they are sandwiched in between the two different rock layers. This rock layer right here, this is what is known as the bottom rock. This one right here is what is known as the top rock. And everything all in between here is all anthracite coal. And it does run vertically 400 feet all the way up to the surface. Because right now we are 400 feet underground. And if you take a look here, you notice that we have a miner here. What our miner is demonstrating is one of the first processes of taking coal out of the mine. When you find these veins of coal, you drill straight into the vein. Usually drill around six holes. In these six holes, you pack them with dynamite. The dynamite explodes, and all the coal comes falling down through something known as a chute, which I'll explain a little bit about later. Follow me back here. No, that was me. I just told you that you know that. There's no blood. That, that's not blood. <laughs> If you take a look 
look right here, see this area, see this ladder? Mm -hmm. yeah. This is what is known as a man way. And this is where our miner over there would go to work every day. What he would do is he would climb all the way up top up there. That's where he would drill the holes. That's where he would set the charges. After he got done doing that, he would climb back down here. He would get to a safe distance. He would set those charges off. There'll be an explosion and all the coal come falling down through the chutes. But those sections all the way up top up there, they're known as heading and monkey way sections. And that's where a majority of all the mining would take place, all the way up top up there. If you look behind you on the ground, there's a box. I'll shine my light on it right there it is on the ground. And in this box, we put some fossils. And the reason why we put fossils in a box is because fossils have something to do with how coal is formed. What coal is, is vegetation around 299, 350 million years ago. This entire region was one large giant swamp or marsh. What occurred was surface pressures. These surface pressures captured vegetation, pressed the vegetation into the earth, and what it did is it formed something known as peat. This peat eventually hardened and turned into something what we call coal today, and the deposits were originally found horizontally. Then what happened in this region around 250 million years ago, two land masses came together. They collided. They took the horizontal formations of coal and turned them vertical. And that's how the anthracite coal was formed. There are two different types of coal. There is hard and soft coal. This is an anthracite mine. This is hard coal. If you go out west around western Pennsylvania, West Virginia region, you have soft coal. The largest known category is bituminous. The difference between the two of them is the amount of heat and pressure that they went through. Anthracite went through an extra amount of heat and pressure. What caused that in this region was the two land masses colliding. This caused the coal to go through a metamorphosis where soft coal has not gone through the extra heat and pressure, so it has not gone through the metamorphosis. So, the two major geological differences between the two types of coal is that hard coal or anthracite is metamorphic rock, where soft coal in all its variants is all considered sedimentary rock. You follow me back here, I'll show you a couple other fossils. If you take a look right here, you can see that we do have a petrified tree. And what a petrified tree is, it's just a tree turning into a rock or into coal. But the reason why this tree did not turn into coal, it is because it is far too large. What coal is, it's mostly smaller vegetation like ferns, grass, things you'd find in a swamp or marsh. And if you take a look right here, you can see an imprint of this smaller vegetation. This is a fossil. What a fossil is, is a remains or an imprint. In this case, it is an imprint. How it was formed? The vegetation was captured, pressed against the rock formation. While the rock formation is being formed, the vegetation turned into coal, and all that's been all mined out of here, and that is the imprint of the vegetation. If you look at all of these boards with the bolts in them, you can see them throughout this entire region. These are known as roof bolts, and the reason why they're in here is because of this right here where I'm shining my light, this crack right here. The rock that is surrounding the coal is shale rock, and shale rock is sedimentary. And the way that it was formed, it was formed through layers. And what happens is water and moisture gets in between those layers and causes it to crack or to flake. So we put these roof bolts in here so we don't have big giant chunks of shale rock falling on top of us. The area of the mine that we're standing in now, this is what is known as a gangway. The main purpose of the gangway is where they load coal onto the carts, and I'll explain more about that in more detail later. If you follow me back this way, we'll head to the next gangway. You want to take a look at the tree and the fossil. I bet you can't see it back here. You may. Excuse me. Yeah, well, they were done right there. 